the illimitable, birthless, deathless, perfectly full existence of the self is inconceivable and ineffable. It need not be regarded as a known or unknown object. If you set yourself free of any tendency to misidentify with any of the content of the three states of waking, dreaming, and deep dreamless sleep, inclusive of the body and the appearance of the mind, and even the least trace of individuality, the existence that is the self will know itself quite naturally, directly, without any intermediary. In this lies immortal bliss and peace. Inquiring, as advised by Sri Bhagavan, who am I? Discern what you suppose yourself to be and realize what you truly are. Never a known or unknown object. You cannot be an object to yourself. As all thought as an objective characteristics, whether gross or subtle. You cannot be a thought. Whatever would be thought of yourself is simply not you. You are not anything conceived in thought at any time. What in truth are you? Quite evidently, your existence, your very being, is mind transcendent. What then is the nature of that? What is referred to as the self is truly yourself. And the idea that there is another kind of self, an individual entity,
to know or to be ignorant of the self is but a false notion, a baseless assumption. That which is described as infinite and eternal, Brahman, is what in truth you are. It is not a part of you, and you are not a part of it. Most certainly you are not apart from it. Rather, the infinite, the eternal, the formless, the homogeneous, the one without another, is what in truth you are. If you cease to misidentify as a body, this will become clear as a matter of direct realization. If you cease to regard yourself in terms of the mind, this will become clear as a matter of direct realization. If you inquire into the very basic assumption of individuality, the ego as it is called, the self will be self-evident. You know that you exist with a doubtless knowledge that is inextricable from the existence itself. This is natural for you. The existence knows itself. Just so, the self realizes itself. You do not require the activity of the senses to know that you exist. You do not require the activity of the mind in order to know that you exist. You do not require anything but the ever-existent existence itself.
just so. The self knows itself with its own knowledge. Being does not require anything else to make it exist. Consciousness does not require anything else in order to know. Bliss does not require anything else in order to be experienced. This being consciousness bliss Satchidananda is your very nature. Where the notion of I subsides, right there and then, the self shines forth in its own light, perfectly so. Therefore, the subsidence of the I, by any possible means, is most desirable. What means could be more direct than inquiring, who am I? So that you discover that precisely where you thought you were an individual entity. You were actually the one existence, the one self, all along.
Thank you, Master. Chair. While your discourse was utterly complete, um, I was curious to ask about something that would be more preliminary, auxiliary, um, maybe sort of like Shankar's requisites, prerequ suggested prerequisites for self-inquiry, but this would be prerequisites if they could be described for taking the instruction of the sage as direct truth that could be experienced just on that basis. Knowing, well, one would be, would seem to be that the sage is not taken as an individual, but that sage is, is utterly trusted as the absolute. And then taking that instruction just on its own merits. You have read something of the Maharshi's instructions, haven't you? What if what he has declared is true? <laughs> Completely, absolutely true. Even if you take just a sentence or two of it, considering it deeply, a simple statement such as, you are the self. What is the significance of it? If you are actually, truly, the self, what does that mean? In the light of that, how could any delusion or illusion stand? So you see, there's nothing preliminary about this. Reality does not require something preliminary. Certainly that word was not that adequate. Um, the feeling I had was that uh, even though there would be full devoted enthusiasm to following through with the instructions, it could be done from the end point rather than from some imagined beginning point. That's right. What is considered the end point is actually what is existing all the time. And the knowledge of the self that is the end becomes the means to itself. Manifesting is the discrimination, the detachment, and so forth, and so on, that are so necessary.
if you are truly the self, as has been declared by the wise, then discriminate, discern clearly what do you suppose yourself to be that is other than the self, that makes you treat the self as an object and the individual as if a subject. For in truth you are not the individual and the truth of the self is non-objective. What do you take yourself to be? Is it you? I was just trying to survey every thought that I could remember in any sensation I've ever experienced and ask myself, was any of those ever you? And if any of them ever was, to any degree, when it was gone, I would have experienced some diminishing in my in my existence, in my happiness, something would be missing. But I don't ever feel like anything's missing if I actually look. In Sadarshan, in verse 13, it talks about gold and ornament. And there's one sentence where you say, you are not an ornament. And that just came to mind when you were just sort of reviewing everything that's objective that one could be or mistake themselves to be. Or as you said to Eric on Friday, the, the carvings in the stone. What I find after reading Sardashanam a lot, over and over and over again, as you speak, I hear lines or I hear parts of many verses keep coming back, and I hear the Maharshi's teaching over and over in so many different ways. And it's so helpful to really focus on something like that, a teaching so that it, um, One way to describe it is I just kind of keep running into the teaching <laughs> or running into myself. It's, 
maybe another way to describe it. And it says so many times in Ribu about if every day one meditates deeply, he doesn't say it this way, but you'll figure it out. I'm just so grateful to have those the Maharshi's teaching in Sardashan so um, they're just so available, they're so understandable if I just just read it <laughs> over and over and I, I I've said this many times and I I've read the same verses, I don't know how many times, and I'm reading them once again, and it's like, there is more in them every time I read them than I, than I read them before. And that's not possible with anything else other than the Maharshi's teaching. I've never found anything else that does that. Well, Shankara does it, or Ribu does it, but it's all that same perfect non-dual teaching that it's almost like whoever was reading this book two years ago is definitely not the person who's reading it now. Maybe that's one way to describe it. or the one that was reading it two years ago, part, parts of it just aren't here reading it now, maybe another way of saying it. Is that it has a way of just sort of, um, whittling away the misconceptions about oneself. That which is revealed in Sadarshanam, truth revealed, in similar scriptures, is timelessly ancient, yet never grows old. It is conclusive, yet of limitless depth. It is of such a nature that it is of perpetual fascination. For those who inquire, they find it to be so.
fascinating about one's teaching and inquiry is that there is no time, there is no place that inquiry can be only limited to. It's like, uh, as I do it, it pulls me to do it at all times. And I used to always struggle about this. That, you know, when I'm doing this, I don't do it. You know, but now, I find that it is kind of like a pull. And I know that it is the pull of Bhagwan. And um, he, he, he is the one that is pulling. Yes, it is His grace, and He Himself is the existence that reveals itself within. He reveals His own existence, as He has said. And as certainly as you are, you can be immersed in knowledge always, just like you are, always. Since inquiry into the self, to know the self, is not a mere thought process. It is not subject to the interruptions that thinking would have. As self-knowledge is not an activity, it's not subject to interruptions as actions would have. If there is continuous depth of inquiry, there's no room left for delusion, no vacancy. Then when there's no scope for ignorance, not even so much as room for the seed of imagination, that which was in practice called inquiry reveals itself as steady knowledge, which is of the nature of pure consciousness. Since the consciousness can never be a known or unknown object, you yourself are the knowledge. That is the very knowledge that was called inquiry in practice. It is innate. Fascination again is that it is experiential. It's not uh, an idea that I pick up from a book. No, there's nothing theoretical about this. It's purely experiential just as your existence and your happiness are purely experiential, nothing theoretical about such. That something so transcendent, so vast, so inconceivable and thus inexplicable, could be so fully revealed by Sri Bhagavan is a great wonder. Another thought that comes to me is how Ribu keeps talking about that 
and you are Brahman and not an atom apart. So like not even that little tiny apart. <laughs> That's just it. If we think there's some little bit apart, less than an atom, just the mere notion of I, that is the silliness. It is just not true. How could there be an I apart from Brahman? And in Brahman, there can't be possibly a trace of I. That Brahman that is eyeless is the only true I. If we lose the contrary supposition, the certainty of this knowledge is obvious. You are Brahman. How could it ever be otherwise? All the sadhanas to lose that contrary supposition. Another fascination is that if somebody tells us something like, you know, in a medical field, you got maybe a heart condition or cancer, it plays on our minds and it becomes like a grows and we worry. But our teacher says, you are Brahman. And why that doesn't play on our minds? Can there be a good reason for illusion? Even when one is fascinated with something, such as what you described, what is it that the mind is searching for? What are you trying to know? You hear of a cancer or a heart condition. You want to know about it, but why do you want to know about it? It's, uh, at, always it is the misidentification of that I Yes, but, and from there, this thinking proceeds. But what is that thinking an attempt to find? What is it that you want to know? So then what you really want to know is about eternal existence. You want the answer. Whenever we attempt to know anything, we are actually looking for our own identity. We're searching to know what is real. We want to find a mortal existence because we know intuitively that in that lies our happiness. 
So we learn about a disease to find an answer to the disease if an answer can be found. And while researching such matters certainly does not necessarily entail ignorance, but can be done egolessly, still it is in the, in the absolute knowledge of egoless, bodiless existence that the final cure is found, the cure for the entirety of illusion cure for samsara. Everyone seems stricken with the disease called birth and death. The prognosis is not good. <laughs> Fortunately, a remedy has been supplied. We have only to apply it. It's a kind of medicine you take always. But if you take it always, inquiring continuously, abiding in knowledge of the self continuously, you get more than just remission. you find liberation from all birth and death. So while you are learning about these things, studying these things, Be sure to abide steadily in the knowledge of what is actually real. Your own bodiless nature. That bodiless, eternal nature is actually alone what is consistently fascinating. Any other topic at some point, sooner or later, will become boring repetitive. Truth is eternal, but not repetitive. Perpetually fascinating and blissfully non-boring. Devotion shares the same nature.
ಶ್ರೀಹರಿಂ ಪರಮಂದ ಉಪದೇಷ್ಟಾರೀಶ್ವರ ವ್ಯಾಪಕ ಸರ್ವೋಕ ಕಾರಣ ತಂ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಐ ಬ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಹಾರಿ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಪ್ರವೇಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಪರೋಕ್ಷಾನುಭೂತಿರ್ವೈ ಪ್ರೋಚ್ಯತೆ ಮೋಕ್ಷಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಸದ್ಭಿರೇವ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನೇನ ವೀಕ್ಷಣೀಯ ಮುಹುರ್ಮುಹು ಡಿರೆಕ್ಟ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಿತ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ದ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮಧರ್ಮೇಣ ತಪಸ ಹರಿತೋಷಣ ಸಾಧನ ಪ್ರಭವೇತ್ ಪುಂಸ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಾದಿ ಚತುಷ್ಟ ಬೈ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಓರ್ಡರ್ ಬೈ ಅಸೆಟಿಸಿಸಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಪ್ರೋಪ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಾರಿ ಮೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೇನ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ರೆಸ್ ರೆಕ್ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಧಿಸ್ಥಾವರಂತು ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಷಯೇಷ್ವನು ಯಥೈವಕ್ಕಾಕವಿಷ್ಟಾ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ತಿ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಸ್ಪಾಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಡಿಸ್ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಇನ್ಯಾನಿಮೆಟ್ as if felt as is felt in respect of the excrement of a crow nityam atma swaroopam hi drishyam tad viparitagam evam yo nischaya samyag viveko vastu nasu vai discrimination of the real means the determination that the nature of the self is eternal while all that is perceptible is otherwise sadeva vasana tyagah shamo yamidi shabditah nigraho bahya vrittinam dama itya vidhiyate the constant eradication of mental impressions is called control of mind the restraint of external activities is called control of body vishaye bhyapara vrittihi paramo paratirhisa sahanam sarva dukkhanam titiksha sa shubha mata extreme extent abstention is the turning away from the objects of enjoyment the endurance of all kinds of pain is called resignation which is beneficial nigama charya vakeshu bhakti shraddhe di vishruta chitte kagram tu sallakshe samadhanam iti smritam devoted belief in the sayings of the veda and of the teacher is called faith the concentration of the mind on the reality that is the ultimate goal is called balance samsara bandha nirmukti hi katham me syat kada vidhe iti ya sudradha buddhi hi vaktavya sa mumukshuta desire for liberation is the name given to the intense thought how and when o oh lord shall liberation from the bonds of samsara come to me ukta sadhana yuktena vichara purushena hi kartavyo jnana siddhyartam atmana shubham ichchata whosoever desires his own welfare should after acquiring the above mentioned qualifications commence the inquiry with a view to the attainment of knowledge notpadyate vinajnanam 
ವಿಚಾರೇಣ್ಯ ಸಾಧನೆ ಯಥಾ ಪದಾರ್ಥ ಭಾನಂ ಹಿ ಪ್ರಕಾಶೇನ ವಿನಾ ಕ್ವಚಿತ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಬೈ ಎನಿ ಅದರ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿನ ಇನ್ಕ್ವೈರಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಕೋಹಂ ಕಥಮಿದ ಜಾತ ಕೋ ವೈ ಕರ್ತೆ ಉಪಾನ ಕಿಮಸ್ತಿ ವಿಚಾರ ಸೋಯಮೀ ದೃಶ ಹೂ ಎಂ ಐ ಹೌ ವಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಬೋರ್ನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ವೈರಿ ರಿಫರ್ ಟು ಅಬೌ ಭೂನಿಧಾಗನೆ ಅನುಭವಂ ವಿನವ ಅನ್ನೋನ್ ತನದ ಅಖಂಡಾನುಭೂತಿಯಲ್ ಗುರುವರುಳೈ ಅನ್ಬಿನ್ ವಿಯಂದ ಸ್ತುತಿಕಂ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಮಾಂಭು ಮುನಿವನ್ ಮೀಂಡುಂ ಮಂದ ನಿಧಾಗ ಮುನಿ ತನೈ ನೋಕಿ ಇನಿದಾಶುಲ್ವಾನ್ ಮರುವಮಿಗ ಅರಿದಾನ ಅಖಂಡ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮಗಿಮೈದನೈ ಉರೈತವನಂ ಮದಿತಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ಪಿರಿವು ಪೆರ ಮನದಿ ನಿಡೈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ತನ್ನೈ ಭೇದ ಮರ ದೃಢಮಾಗ ಪೆಟ್ರಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ತರಳ ಮನೋ ವಿಗರ್ಪ ಮೆಲಾಂ ತವಿಂದು ನನ್ರಾಯ್ ತನ್ಮಯ ಮಾಯ್ ನಿಷ್ಠೈದನೈ ಸಾರ್ಂದಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ಅಗಮರುವು ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ಅನಿತು ನೀಂಗಿ ಅಖಂಡ ಪರ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಅಡೆಂದಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ತಗಮಯೂರ ಕರುಮತ್ತಿಲ್ ವೆಗು ಕಾಲತ್ತಾರ್ ತಂಗಿಯ ನಿನ್ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸಂ ತವಿರ್ದಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ನಿಖಿಲಮು ಮೇ ಉನ್ಮಯನು ನಿನೈವು ನೀಂಗಿ ನಿಜಮಾನ ನಿನ್ ವಡಿವಿನ್ ನಿಲೈತಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ಸಕಲ ವಿಧ ದ್ವೈತತ್ತಿನ್ ಭಯಮು ನೀಂಗಿ ಚಲನ ಮಿಲಾಭಯ ಪದಂ ಶಾಂದಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ಓರು ಪೊರುಳು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಮಲಾದೊರು ಕಾಲತ್ತು ಉನ್ಮಯುರಾದೆನ್ರುರಮಾಯ್ ಉನಂದಾಯ್ ಕೊಲ್ಲೋ ಸರ್ವಮು ಮೇ ಅಖಂಡ ಪರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮೆನ್ನು 
சலனமிலா உறுதியினை சார்ந்தாய் கொள்ளோ உரை தருமே உறுதியினால் உழைவொன்றின்றி உணர்வுருவா முன் வடிவில் ஓய்ந்தாய் கொள்ளோ அறியவனே அனதிபவ துக்க நீங்கி அகண்ட பரமானந்தம் அடைந்தாய் கொள்ளோ இதனையெல்லாம் விரிவுரணி இசைப்பாயென்றே இவ்விதமாய் விபு முனிவன் இசைத்தலோடும் அதிசயமா மாசிரியன் கருணையாளே அகண்ட பர விஜானம் திருடமாய் பெற்ற மதியுடனே மகத்தான மகிழ்வு கூர்ந்து மதிக்கவுனா அன்புடனே குருவை நோக்கி துதமருவா அனுபூதி அனைத்தும் சொல்ல துகளற்ற நிதக முனி தொடங்கி நானால் மாசனுகா பர குருவே அகண்ட ஜானம் மகிமையெல்லாம் முறைத்தவனம் மதித்தோனானென்று தேசிகனின் கருணையினால் திருடபோதத்தை தியகமிலா மனத்தினிடை தரித்தோனானே பேசவுனா அகண்ட பர பிரம்மன் தன்னை பிரிவற்ற மனதினிடை பெற்றோனானே பாசமுரா எனது நிஜ ஸ்வரூபத்தின் கண் பகுப்பற்ற நிஷ்டையினை பெற்றோனானேன் சத்குருவே நினதருளால் அகண்ட ஜானம் சத்துருவாம் அஜானம் அனைத்தும் நீங்கி நிர்குணமாம் பரபிரம்ம ஞானம் பெற்று நிகிலவித கருமத்தும் ஸ்ரத்தையற்று துர்குணமாம் பிரபஞ்ச உண்மை நீங்கி துவைதத்தார் தொடரு பயம் அனைத்தும் நீங்கி அக்ஷரமாம் பரபிரம்ம ஸ்வரூபமாகி அயலற்ற அபய பதம் அடைந்தேனந்தோ குருவருணின் கருணையினால் கண நேரத்தில் குறைவு தரும் பேதமதி அனைத்தும் நீங்கி சர்வமுமே பிரம்மமெனும் நிச்சயத்தை சாலவுமே திருடமாக சார்ந்தேனந்தோ பரவிய இவ்வுரமான நிச்சயத்தா பரமான என்னிடையான் சாந்தனாகி விரவு பவ துக்கங்கள் அனைத்தும் நீங்கி விமல பரமானந்தம் அடைந்தேனந்தோ இதுவரையில் அஜானம் பகையால் கெட்டேன் இன்றுனது கருணையினால் அபயம் பெற்றேன் இதுவரையின் மனதென்னும் பகையால் கெட்டேன் இன்றுனது கருணையினால் மகத்தேயானேன் இதுவரையில் கருமையினும் மதியாய் கெட்டேன் இன்றுனது கருணையினால் கலக்கம் மற்றேன் இதுவரையில் ஜீவனெனும் மதியார் கெட்டேன் இன்றுனது கருணையினால் சிவமேயானேன் நான் முன்ன மதிவையினாய் அலைந்து நின்றேன் நான் இன்றிங் ஆன்மாவென் அறிந்தோ நானேன் நான் முன்ன தேகமென தியங்கி நின்றேன் நான் இன்று திருக்குருவென் அறிந்தோ நானேன் நான் முன்ன சித்தமென சலித்து நின்றேன் நான் இன்று சின்மயமென்றோ நானே நான் முன்ன சிதபாசம் எனவே நின்றேன் நான் இன்று சிற்பரமென் அறிந்தோ நானேன் அகமெனவே தோன்றியதும் பிரம்மமாயிற்று அந்நியமாய் தோற்றியதும் பிரம்மமாயிற்று புகமுகதாய் தோற்றியதும் பிரம்மமாயிற்று உயிர்களென தோற்றியதும் பிரம்மமாயிற்று இக பரமாய் தோற்றியதும் பிரம்மமாயிற்று இதுவதுவாய் தோற்றியதும் பிரம்மமாயிற்று அகிலவித தோற்றமுமே பிரம்மமாயிற்று 
இடமருவும் மாயை முதல் பிரம்ம மாயிற்று ஈசனவன் செய்கையெல்லாம் பிரம்ம மாயிற்று உடன் முதலாம் உபதியெல்லாம் பிரம்ம மாயிற்று உபதியுறும் ஜீவனெல்லாம் பிரம்மாயிற்று இடர் முதலாம் தொந்தமெல்லாம் பிரம்மாயிற்று இத்வைத ஜகதெவையும் பிரம்மாயிற்று அடர் பலவாம் தோற்றமுமே பிரம்மாயிற்று அற்புதமானினதருளிதென்னே என்னே முன்மலமாய் தோற்றியலில் எனக்கு எனக்கு மோகமிலா பரபிரம்மம் மாயிற்றந்தோ தன் மனதாய் தோன்றியதே இன்றனக்கு தத்துவமாம் பரபிரம்மம் ஆயிற்றந்தோ கர்மமென தோற்றியதே இன்றனக்கு கலங்கமுரா பரபிரம்மம் ஆயிற்றந்தோ புன்மையென தோன்றியதே இன்றனக்கு பூரணமாம் பரபிரம்மம் ஆயிற்றந்தோ நினதருளான் மனதிலுள்ள சந்தேகங்கள் நிகிலமுமே நிமிடத்தின் நீங்கேற்றந்தோ நினதருளான் மனதிலுள்ள பவபாசங்கள் நிகிலமுமோர் நிமிடத்தின் நீங்கேற்றந்தோ நினதருளால் ஜீவஜக பரங்கள் என்ன நிகழுமய நிகிலமுமே நீங்கேற்றந்தோ நினதருளால் நிகிலமுமே பிரம்மம் என்னும் நிச்சலமாய் நிச்சயமே நிலைத்ததந்தோ நிகிலமென தோற்றுவதும் சித்தம் தானே நினதருளால் சித்தமதே பிரம்மமாயிற்று அகிலமுமே பிரம்மமதாம் அது நான் என்னும் அகண்ட பர பாவனையே செய்திங்கத்தார் சகலமென்றும் நான் என்றும் பேதம் நீங்கி சலனமிலா அகண்ட பர நிஷ்டை கூடி பகரவோனா பவபாசம் மனைத்தும் தள்ளி பங்கமிலா பரபிரம்மம் ஆனே நந்தோ நான் தானே சண்மயமாம் பிரம்மமானேன் நான் தானே சின்மயமாம் பிரம்மமானேன் நான் தானே நிர்மலமாம் பிரம்மமானேன் நான் தானே நிச்சலமாம் பிரம்மமானேன் நான் தானே பூரணமாம் பிரம்மமானேன் நான் தானே புரையற்ற பிரம்மமானேன் நான் தானே அகண்ட பர பிரம்மமானேன் ஆதலில் ஆதருண் மகிமை என்னே என்னே